depth of field is reduced for macro and close-up shots. Depth of field is controlled by aperture, focal length of lens and sensor size. They will reduce or increase depth of field. It is difficult to take good shots of shrubs in strong sunlight. Macro or close-up photography is easier in dull light, even rain. Strong sunlight produces a high dynamic range that no camera can handle without help. But get it right and the results can be stunning. All images taken over a couple of days in May with the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. Normally I use the 12 to 100 Pro lens, but it is not cheap. An excellent budget lens is the 12 to 50, no longer listed in the Olympus catalog, and it has a dedicated close-up facility lacking in the 12 to 100. However, it is a variable aperture zoom, losing as much as two stops between wide angle and telephoto, which can be a drawback. Otherwise, the quality is first rate. The placing of the subject and angle of view is important, and this shot of dandelion seed heads shows why. Because they are not on the same plane, they are not all in focus. Out of focus elements can help composition, but they must be in the right place, usually in the background and not the main subject. It is easier to achieve overall sharpness if everything is on the same plane, but the camera must be at 90 degrees to the subject. Things start to get tricky when a shrub has depth or the camera is at an angle. The closer you get to the subject, depth of field is reduced to less than an inch, risking overall sharpness. However, depth of field can be increased with a smaller aperture or a wide angle lens. For the wild garlic, I set the aperture to f6.3. This increased depth of field a bit, but because I zoomed into 50mm, that is 100 for a 35mm film camera, it was reduced again, so it is swings and roundabouts where, in the end, experience wins the day. But there was another problem. The background is in deep shadow and it gives the image a high dynamic range. I spot meter the wild garlic, otherwise the background will fool the metering, overexposing the shrub, making it difficult to correct in post-production. I also set the exposure value to minus 0.7 to make sure. Saving to RAW allowed me to lighten the background at will, but not too much, as that can add noise. By exposing for the wild garlic, it stands out from the background. I am taking advantage of a technical limitation which the eye does not see. Furthermore, here are two similar shots, one spot metered, the other auto. The difference is amazing, showing the lack of control that auto has. I use the 12 to 50 lens most of the time, as it has a macro button, useful for when you are not using a dedicated macro lens. However, for the dandelion seed head, I resorted to my favorite 12 to 100 Pro lens, which does not have macro. Normally, I would use this lens for landscapes and architecture. However, I went in as close as possible with the aperture set at f8 to extend depth of field, but the focal length was 100 millimeters, that is 200 in film, which reduced it. Complicated? Well, yes, 
And this is where experience matter, which no clever bit of electronic kit can ever supersede. It is cropped, but the quality is still amazing. This is helped by spot metering the seed head, and if I am critical, it is starting to blow out at the top of the seed head. I could have used specialist gear, but it is also important to show what can be achieved with basic kit, especially for the novice or for the photographer for whom macro is an occasional part of their work and where a dedicated macro lens might not be necessarily cost effective.